Amen. Let's sing that song right there. Stand with me, would you? We come into this house, gathered in His name. Amen. We have come into this house, gathered in His name to worship Him. We have come into this house, gathered in His name to worship Him. We have come into this house, gathered in His name. Christ the Lord, worship Him, Christ the Lord. So forget about yourselves, concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourselves. Concentrate on Him, worship Him. So forget about yourselves, concentrate on Him, and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ. Lift up holy hands, magnify his name, and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands, magnify his name, and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands, magnify his name. And worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him. Christ the Lord. Would you give Him praise this morning? I sing praises to His name. Amen. I sing praises to Your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name. Oh Lord, glory to your name. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing it again. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name. Oh Lord, glory to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be. I'll sing it just one more time, would you? I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name. Oh To be praised. Won't you 
praise Him, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Yes, I know He holds my future and just because He lives. I'll sing that right there again. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Sometimes I've left feeling like I came. But whose fault was that? Nobody's fault but mine, was it? Because I had every opportunity to partake of the things of God. And so uh, God is good. Thank you for giving this morning. And I appreciate you uh, being obedient to the Lord and your giving. And uh, uh, God is good to us. I don't know if it's up there or not. Brother Danny, you got it up there. Uh, can you show the QR code that will be on the... Uh, my son was here last week, and I put him to work. I put my computer-minded son to work this week. And uh, this will be on your bulletins in the next week. And if you decide during the week that I want to give some money to the church, hallelujah. Yeah. All you will have to do is zoom in on that Q code right there, and it'll pop up to our website where that we have online giving. And you can give online there. And so uh, in that, that's pretty Amen. big, I think. And so uh, I appreciate you doing that. I <laughs>
heaven is near. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Amen. All right. Amen. Wow. Surely, Lo, you're still one of the best piano players. Don't let the enemy tell you that. You're still wonderful. Well, I feel the anointing every time she plays that song. I, I, could, I could stand another round of that, couldn't you? Play it one more time. I said, well, I'll, you give me the words and I'll try. <laughs> you know it, stand sing it with me. If you don't know it, stand sing it with me. Amen. <laughs> Goodbye, world, goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. Cause I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear the last trumpet sound, my feet won't stay on the ground. I'm going to rise with a shout, going to fly, going to ride with my Lord through the sky. Heaven is near and I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear the last trumpet sound, my feet won't stay on the ground. I'm going to rise with a shout, going to fly. Through the sky. Heaven is near, and I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Amen, amen. Thank you. Well, why don't you just stay, remain standing for the word of the Lord this morning. Go over to Ephesians chapter 6 with me, if you have your Bibles. What a wonderful job, Sister Shirley. Thank you so much. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. I don't know if you saw it this week or were able to watch it online, but I was so proud on Friday morning. My son received his ordained Amen. bishop's license this week, and uh, what a joy yes. that was. And uh, uh, just, I couldn't, have, I couldn't have been probably one of the happiest days of my life was to see Caleb go across that stage and Nikki and receive that um, ordained bishop's certificate, which is the highest rank of ministry in our church. So it's a huge accomplishment. And I didn't he do a good job last Sunday? Just uh, that boy can sing the paint off the walls. I'm telling you, that boy can sing. And uh, um, somebody said he's a chip off the old block. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10 through 12. Finally, I like that word finally. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Father, I need your help. I know that you spoke to me this week. I know that you dealt with my heart. I, I've heard from you, and, and I'm going to do everything in, that I can this morning to follow the leading of the Spirit of the Lord. 
that you would fill my heart and my mouth with your words today to encourage your people about this battle that we're in, that we're going to win. We've already won. We've got to realize that. But God, I pray that you would touch everybody in this place today. And I will give you praise and I will give you glory and I'll give you thanks. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. I think I might have left this right back here. This week is amazing to me. As I was as honestly, when I was praying this week, I sensed in my heart and in my spirit that the church is about to come into the greatest attack that it's ever been under. Especially in our minds and our in our in our day. We're about to see things happen that we never thought would happen. Some uh, enemies of our soul coming up against us. We all know this week that um, Roe versus Wade was turned over. Isn't that wonderful? That's uh, one of the greatest days for our nation, I believe. Uh, and the problem is, though, Satan and all of his demonic forces are fuming mad because of the decision made this past week. And I sensed in my spirit an all-out assault from hell against anyone who was excited about the decision for life. The problem is even some so-called Christians are upset about this ruling from our Supreme Courts. And what's funny to me about that is that about a week ago, most of them was having a problem understanding what a woman was. A week ago... So this morning I felt the need to talk to you, to you about a real battle that we're facing. People feel as though the rights of women and their own bodies have been violated by taking away that right. But can I tell you this morning, it's never really been a right of anybody to murder a baby. It's just never been a right of anybody to do that. Uh, listen to this pastor. Those same people that are fighting now against those that made the decision are going to do everything in their power to take the rights of Christians away from us. And we do have rights. I looked it up. Shirley shared this with me before service. And uh, this is a list of companies, not just one. But this is a list of companies that this week have decided that since uh, Roe versus Wade was turned over, that they're going to support their employees by paying their travel to, the, to a different state to get a, abortions, and they're going to they're fund their money so they can travel to these states. Disney being the number one. Disney's the number one. They're going to be giving money to their employees to travel to different states to have abortions. Paramount Theaters is another. Netflix, uh oh. Yeah. Netflix is another. They're going to pay their employees, fund them a mileage, whatever they need, to get to another state. If they live in a state that don't allow abortions, to get there so they can abort their babies. Meta, Warner Brothers, there goes Bugs Bunny right there. Comcast, Sony, uh, Intuit, BuzzFeed, uh, Dick Sporting Goods. Uh, do what, Yogi? That don't surprise you. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods, some something called Box, and Johnson and Johnson have decided that they're going to pay their employees the mileage and whatever it takes for them to get to another state so they can have their babies aborted. We're in a fight. We're in a battle. We're, we're in a battle. And I want to talk to you this morning about this is a real battle that we're in. Finally, the first word of verse 10 is a blessing. I really believe that. That word indicates that we have reached the last major section of the book of Ephesians. 
as Paul nears the end of this book, he closes with a final series of admonitions. And he challenges his readers to open their eyes to the spiritual warfare in which that they are engaged. He calls them to... Uh, uh, to the, he calls them to be sure that they are on the right foundation, wearing the proper spiritual garments, and fighting the right enemies, and trusting the right Lord. I'm not sure that always that we recognize it, but we are always engaged in spiritual warfare. All the time. And I'll say more about that in just a few moments. But by the way of introduction, I want to remind you that the people of God face some very real, powerful enemies in this world in which we live. There's a being called Satan. And he controls an, an, an evil kingdom of demonic forces. And Satan and his demons are doing all they can to undermine the work of God in this present world. They're doing all they can to defeat and discourage the people of God. They're, they're doing all they can to hinder the church, the body of Christ. And they're doing all they can to see that we, the people of God, fail in our mission to live for God and bring Him glory. See, the enemies we face are powerful. The battles we fight are real. The cost of defeat are far higher than we realize. And the glories of our victory are far more wonderful than we can even imagine. And the passage that I read to you this morning tells us how to avoid failure and how to achieve success in the battle that I'm going to talk to you about this morning. This passage is about how that we can conduct ourselves in the spiritual warfare that rages around us and even sometimes within us. God help me. So if we're going to be victorious in this spiritual battles we, we're facing, we're going to have to realize that we need spiritual power. You see, the problem is none of us possess spiritual power within ourselves. We are weak. We are frail. We're fallible. We're foolish creatures. And we're often on the losing side of the battles of this life. And if we hope to achieve any victory at all, we must have the true spiritual power within us. And this verse tells us, where that power originates. Our strength comes from a person. The Bible said be strong in the Lord. The word strong means to be empowered, to be strengthened. It was used to speak of a deathbed patient recovering from an illness. It is the picture of someone who is weak being made strong. And that sounds like what we need. Amen. Psalms 24 and 8, the Bible said, Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. We're re we're, we, we really are, listen to me. We really are weak creatures. We are weak emotionally. We are weak in the way we think. Somebody help me a few minutes. I'm trying to help us because the Lord has shown me you better be ready. I don't know if I've ever got a more clear word from God about what's going to take place in the new future. Is this gloom and despair and agony on me preaching? No, I'm just telling you the truth. You better be ready for the days to come. But we are weak creatures. Emotionally, the way we think, we're weak in our spirits. We're weak when it comes to temptation and sin. Amen. We are weak in our ability to control our own wills. We are simply weak 
And we got to have somebody to help us with that. So the strength we need to walk in victory in the battles of life will never come within ourselves. The strength we need can only come from the Lord Himself. This verse says, be strong in the Lord. That means that any spiritual strength that we can ever hope to possess must come from Jesus. Spiritual power can only be ours through a relationship with Christ. Let me stop right there and say this. If I didn't have a true relation with God right now, if I didn't know that I was saved without a doubt, blood bought uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I would be shaking in my boots. I'd be one of the most scared people on the face of the earth because you are about to fall, my friend. This means that just as we trust Jesus and his death, let me back up just a minute. Be strong in the Lord. That means that any strength that we can ever hope comes from Him. Spiritual power can only be ours through that relationship with Jesus Christ. This means that just as we trust Jesus and His death and His resurrection to save us, we must trust Him to give us the spiritual power that we so desperately need. Just as we need His righteousness to enter into God's heaven, we need His power. Listen to me. We need His power if we're going to stand the attacks of this life that we face. And just as we need His blood to take away our sins, we need His power to overcome the enemy of our life, which is the devil himself. Our strength comes from a provision in the power of his might. The word power refers to, to dominion. It speaks of the power to complete and perfect something. The word might has the idea of force and strength. It speaks of someone who possesses absolute ability. Well, I love that. These two words describe the kind of power that we need if we're going to experience victory in the battles that we face. So how do we get that power, Pastor? I believe we get in the same way that our sins are forgiven. We get in the same way that we are forgiven uh, given by His righteousness. Uh, we get it the same way that we're saved, we get it simply by trusting Him and not ourselves. If I try to stand against the devil and his, his forces in my own power, I can grant you that I'm going to fail. If I can ever learn to lean on the Lord and confess my own weakness and place my faith in His power alone, I become an, a, a candidate for the victory that I need. When I understand that if I don't have in my, Him in my life, I don't serve Him with all that I've got, my heart, soul, mind, and strength, I'm in for the worst days of my life. One of the truths Paul has been trying to teach us is that when we are saved, we're made one in Jesus. Is anybody glad of that? Thus His life becomes our life. His truth becomes our truth. His way becomes our way. And His power becomes our power. And His strength becomes our strength. Here's what we forget. When Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead, He defeated Satan and all of His works. That means this war actually is already over. And Jesus has already won it. So we're not fighting for victory. Somebody help me shout this morning. We're fighting from victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we can come to the place where we understand that our Lord has already defeated Satan and that when we are in Jesus, hallelujah, we are partakers of His victory and it will help us to walk in victory in the day-to-day -day battles that we face. 
Wow, that's good stuff. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So again, I ask the question, where do we get this power? It comes from simply being in Jesus. Wow. See, when, when you are in Jesus by faith, saved by His grace, you become partakers of His power and His strength and His ability. Somebody give Him praise this morning. Somebody give Him thanks. So if there's to be any spiritual power, any spiritual victory, it must come from Him. It must be given to us by the Lord. True, true spiritual power will only come to those who are in Jesus. Wow. So the source of spiritual strength is in Jesus Christ alone. And in His power. And it's only given to those who are in a faith relationship with Him. I want to say that several times. You've got to have a relationship with Jesus. Y'all stay awake this morning and help me. This verse reminds us that we're foolish when we trust in ourselves and in our own power. We're foolish when we think that the, when we fight the devil and his demons and sin and temptation, the world and the other enemies of life in our own strength. We're foolish when we think that we can handle it on our own. I'll tell you something. Don't play around with the devil. Some people take him so lightly. Even sinners think they can handle their sin. So we must realize that we cannot handle it. We must realize that we are weak. Realize that if we try to do it on our own, we will be defeated. We must trust not ourselves, but in Christ, who has promised His power and His victory to His people. I love Philippians 4 and 13 that says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 2 and 14, the Bible says, Now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph. How? In Christ. That's how you win. Romans 8 and 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord. Jesus Christ, won't you praise Him today that you have victory through Him? Not only is He the source of our strength, He's the source of our stability. This verse teaches us the glorious truth that it's possible for us to stand. I love that. It tells me I can stand against the enemies who stand against God and against us. See, we are embattled. The wiles of the devil. This phrase both into, uh, identifies our enemy and how he works. We're told that our enemy is the devil. We'll talk more about that in a moment for now, but let just, let just let me say that he is the enemy of God. He stands against everything God stands for. He hates God and he wants nothing more than to destroy God and install himself as the Lord of all. According to the Bible, the devil is the source of all evil. Sin first barred its fangs in the heart of its creature known as Lucifer. He determined that he would be God and that he would exalt himself above the throne of the one and the only true God. But we all know that Satan was defeated and cast out of heaven Amen. along with one third of the angels. Wow. And those fallen angels are demons. A lot more demons around than we realize. 
Why would he give us authority to cast out demons if there wasn't demons around for us to cast out? Well, they're demons. And Satan still does all he can to dethrone God and to rob God of his glory. This enemy, he's, he, he's ancient. He's powerful. He's deceptive. He's experienced. He's been attacking and deceiving and defeating the people of God. Since he tempted Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He's had over 6,000 years of practice. And he knows what he's doing. I'm not giving him any glory. Don't get me wrong. I'm simply telling the truth about our enemy. Paul says that God will give us power to cause us to stand against the wiles of the devil. The word wild speaks of scheming tricks. It is the word that gives us the word methods. He's got a lot of methods. He's got a lot of ways to get at us. Satan methods are and, and to use tricks and schemes to deceive the people of God. The worst day of the world, to me, one of the worst days of the world is when whoever painted the picture of the devil with a pitchfork. Huh. One of the worst days is when they put a tail on him. And he, with horns, he was the most beautiful angel. And I don't find where his looks changed. I don't find where his appearance changed. That's why the Bible, you better have some spirit of discernment about you. Because you, you might believe it's a real angel when it's the devil himself. You better learn those tricks of the trade that he has. He's always been and always will be a scheming trickster. And he's planned on tricking you. So how are we equipped? The Bible said put on the whole armor of God. God has equipped us for this spiritual battle that we're facing and about to face in the future. And every piece of the armor of God is designed to protect the people of God from the attacks of the enemy. Now I want to consider the words armor and hold and put on just for a moment. The word armor reflects the equipment that God has provided to us in the day of battle. There is truth to wear as a belt. There is righteousness to protect the heart. There are shoes to protect the feet. There is a shield to defect the arrows of the enemy. And there's a helmet to protect the head, to protect your mind. And there's a sword to use to engage the enemy. And all of this has been provided to every believer so that we can walk in the victory that God wants us to walk in. The word whole suggests... That every piece of the armor of God is essential to endure our victory over the enemy. We can't put on a few pieces of this armor. You cannot get up in the morning and say, I don't feel like wearing this helmet today. It's getting hot. I don't feel like putting on this big old breastplate today. It's too heavy to carry around. But let me tell you, wherever, whatever you leave when you get up in the morning and go out in the world, I can grant you that's where the enemy is going to attack you that day. Amen. When he finds you missing your helmet, he's going to attack your mind. I'm a firm believer that the enemy can't get through the helmet. Amen. 
We must take it off sometimes. Yes. Because, I, I, I'm telling you, he's the one said to wear it to protect your head or your mind. Yes. And he meant what he said. So you've got to have on every piece of this. Amen. Oh yes, yeah, some days it not, might not feel good. Some days you might want to do what you want to do and wear what you want to wear. I loved it this week. I've got one of them red hangout shirts. You know what I'm talking about? I bought every color they had to take the assembly. It's going to be 100 degrees in San Antonio, Texas. And I've got me a red, there was a red button up one, and guess who's got one too? Thatcher. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's, we wore them Friday night to camp meeting together. Sometimes we want to wear what we want to wear. Leave the helmet at home or the shoes at home. But I'm telling you, you're entering the days, you better not take off a piece. Man, I felt the Holy Ghost there. Samson was defeated because he left one place open. There was enough room for that rock to get through. I love you enough to preach this this morning. The put on is a tense that suggests that when we put on the whole armor of God, we put it on once and for all. The idea is that we dress for the battle and we never take off the uniform. <laughs> there are some kids that have come to camp this week that will never take off their clothes this week. They get to camp with some clothes on and they leave camp with them same clothes on. And man, do they stink when they get home. I remember one year, Anissa Caleb came home and his bag with toothpaste and toothbrush had never been opened. Not a one of it had been touched all week long. But I'm telling you, you better keep this uniform on till the day you die. You better not take it off. Because as soon as you take it off, the enemy's going to come right where you've left vulnerable for him to attack you. There are no days off in this war. There are no vacations in this war. Every day is to be spent on the front lines of battle, engaging with the enemy in vital spiritual combat. And God has equipped us for the battle we face. Somebody praise Him for that this morning. He's given us everything we need to stand against the enemy and to joy victory every day of our life. Let me tell you something. You can shout with that uniform on. Somebody help me a minute. You, you can still be happy. You can still, in fact, that's the only way you can be happy is when you're wearing that uniform. Any other days, you'll have no joy because you'll be attacked. Man, I, I, Brother Doherty, I don't know if the Lord's ever given me a point that I want to get across so much. Whatever you leave off is where he will attack you. I don't know about you, but I've had some days that I had mind problems. I must be the only one in the house. But somehow, if I could get my helmet back on. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? God help me. So how are we enabled that you may able to be able to stand through the Lord and what He provides us to make us able to stand? The word able has the idea of power and permission and ability. We are able to stand. Not th somebody on shelf there that we are able to stand, not through our own power but through the work of God in our lives. His power gives us the ability to stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word stand is a military term. It means to hold a critical position during a time of enemy attack. It is the image of a soldier refusing to yield even one inch of ground to an attacking foe. It is not the image of someone on the offensive, but rather it is the picture of a soldier on the defensive, 
protecting the ground that's already been won. Wow. Let me tell you something. You better put it on and you must declare to the enemy of your soul, you're not going to have my children. I will cut Disney off in my house. I will throw Disney toys out in the yard. I won't give them to my neighbor's kids to play with. I burn them before I do. Amen. Pastor Gann, that's radical. You better get radical. Amen. 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 If you got Disney cruises planned, cancel them. If enough Christians, yes, that's right. Come on. did you hear what I said? Would have, if enough Christians wouldn't buy into that mess, Amen. we can make an impact in this world. Amen. Now ho hold on. If you, if you do this, I'm, I'm not being, being mean to you. If we stay out of Starbucks, yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. if we stay out of Starbucks, that says if you don't believe in, in the homosexual lifestyle, don't come to our store. They've already asked you not to come. They're against our military people. So why in the world do we go? I don't know where that came from. That's pretty good. I, I was talking about you better not give an inch. Because here's what he's after. The enemy wants our truths. He wants our doctrines. Oh Lord, does he want our doctrines. He wants our testimonies. He wants our churches. He wants our families. He wants our marriages. He wants our children. He wants our spiritual power and He wants everything that God has given to us. Amen. And I'm telling you, you better have it all on and be able to stand there and say, Devil, you're not going to take one inch of what God has given me. I guess if I'd have a fear, if I'd be honest and I have a fear, one fear that I kind of fight with, is what's this world going to be like in 10 years for my grandbabies if the Lord doesn't come? But the darling, what if it's like it is now and the same liberal minded people that'll run this nation for many years to come? What's this world going to be like in 10 years from now? But you got to remember this. And I'll try to wind this down and skip a lot of notes. We must remember we don't fight Republicans. We don't fight Democrats. We don't fight presidents. We don't fight vice presidents. We don't fight flesh and blood. We must understand that everything they do is undermined. Satan just looks for people that he can work through. That will give him an open door to be able to come in and control them. I, I don't mean to be mean to my president. I don't mean to be mean to anybody in Washington. But when you can agree to kill a baby and you can agree that a man's supposed to marry a man or a woman's supposed to marry a woman, you've done invited the devil himself into your heart and in your mind. And uh, you might, you're not my enemy, but the enemy of my soul is working through you. And so, yes, I will stand up to all of those powers that be because I know where they come from. I know where the source is. Now, I can't do a whole lot. Now, I do, I, let me tell you something. 
the government up there thinks they can do whatever they want. Come take my guns. They might try. I'm probably going to shoot you going out the door with the one I got hid. So come do all of that. I don't know. They're going to try. But let me tell you, you can never defeat me in this spiritual battle that we're in. You can never defeat me in the spiritual battle that we're in. Because soon and very soon, the trump of God is about to sound. And the dead in Christ is about to rise first. And we which are alive and are remaining are going to be caught up together with the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So the enemy isn't a neighbor of yours. The enemy is not flesh and blood. The enemy is the very demonic powers of hell that's after your children. Amen. I've alluded to this a few times and I don't mean to override it. But who would ever thought we'd come to a day when there's people in this world that thinks it's all right for a man to walk in the bathroom with your grandbaby. That's sick. Some human mind couldn't even think that up. That come from the pits of hell. But he had to work through people. That one old man about got whipped by the preacher. My wife was in the dressing room. Y'all have heard me tell this. She's in the dressing room and they come and told me that there's a man went in the dressing room with my wife. I went and told the store clerk and the woman, she said, sir, there's not a thing I can do about it. I said, something I can do about it. <laughs> really, I did. Saturday night before Easter, about good put in jail. Because I said, he ain't going to be in there with my wife. And I went in after him. Thank God he was coming out when I was going in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Big old fella. But Chuck Ben him was fixing to have a problem. Because they may not want to do something about that. But let me, I'm just being honest. If a man walks in the bathroom with my Jovi... You've got a fight on your hands. Because I know where this source is coming from. That's somebody that's been used by the devil. Amen. But how many are glad this morning that we win? The victory's already won. We're, we're, we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. We've already won. So just put on the armor. Put on the helmet. Put on the bracelet. You better put it on your feet. Because I will tell you, uh, the, uh, it's going to get harder to walk sometimes in this battle. I'm dreading going in one sense, and I'm closed, and I promise, Sister Shirley, come on. I'm dreading going in one way to the assembly. Ever since my heart surgery, I have hurt so bad. I can walk a few feet, a few yards, and then I just get where it's hard to walk. My, my legs hurt me so much. In the physical, it's just hard to walk. And I know how much walking it's going to be when I get there. But I'm telling you, there's a spiritual battle that the enemy wants to stop us. He wants to stop our righteous walk. Somebody help me a minute. He wants to stop our walk in the faith. We walk by, not by sight, but by faith. He wants to destroy our feet. That we walk in the ways of righteousness and holiness. That we walk after the Lord. So He wants to destroy our walk. Everything about us, He wants to destroy. But I've got some news for you, devil. I know you're going to, I, I know you're going to try. You're supposed to try. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm surprised when you do try. But you know you're defeated. Amen. I don't know why I act surprised. You're just doing what you are supposed to do. But I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to put on the whole armor of God. And I'm supposed to stand. I'm supposed to stand in this evil day. I'm going to, I've already won this battle. 
I like that old song. It says, I may lose a battle now and then, but I've already won the war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can I remind Satan? He's, you know, he is the God of this world. Satan has a vast kingdom, but how many know that God's kingdom is infinite? One day Satan himself will bow down and say that Jesus is Lord. So how do we defeat an enemy like that? Here's how. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You're no match for the devil when you have your armor on. You're no match for his enemies, but Jesus in you, you're going to win. When we stand in Jesus, he will equip us to stand for him. Don't play with him. Don't, don't take your armor off and think you're going to win because you won't. A pastor friend of mine several years ago told me that what they used to walk home from school. They'd go home from school, and every day there's no dog there. And they knew how far that dog could come, and they would tease that dog. They'd say, come on, get me, come on, come on, come on, get me. So that big old dog would just run as hard as it could, snarling and snapping. And all of them they'd think it's going to get them, and boom, it would stop just inches away from them because they knew how far. One day they took their armor off. Danny said one day they came by and Ronnie, his brother, took his shirt off. Looked at that old dog and said, come and get me, come and get me, come and get me. They didn't know that day that somebody took the collar off that dog. And it was just sitting beside its doghouse that day. Said it about got both of them. They were up trees and on top of buildings. Let me tell you, as soon as you take your armor off, he'll get you. He'll get you. Look at your neighbor and say, he'll get you without your armor. He'll get you without that armor. But if you've got that armor on, you know who, who the armor I think is? I think it's Jesus. You put on Jesus every day of your life. He'll protect your head. He'll protect your heart. He'll protect everything about you when you got Jesus on. And you're in him. Bow your heads with me. Father, if there's anybody here today that don't know you as Savior and Lord, Today, would you save him? Lord, it's going to get rough. This battle is raging. The enemy, I don't know, he must not have figured out he's already lost. Because he's sure trying. I know he's already lost because you defeated him on the cross. You won, you won the battle when your blood was shed. And I give you praise for that. But Lord, if there's somebody here this morning that don't know you, maybe they backslid. Maybe they once knew you. Maybe they once served you. Once they ask you into their heart, but they know that they're not serving you like they need to serve you now. And they don't have the helmet on. They don't have a part of the armor on. So today, Father, I ask for conviction in their heart that they would come to this altar and ask you to forgive them of their sins. Is anybody this morning that you don't know Jesus? You know that you're not right with him. And this morning, you'd like to come to this altar and ask Jesus to forgive you of all of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Anybody? Might seem silly to you this morning. But would you do something? Find you a Bible around. And I want you to do something before you come up today.
before you walk up here today, I want you to do something. Would you... Uh, Your belt keeps everything together. <laughs> Brother Hancock asked me this morning, said, I didn't know you wore suspenders. I do. <laughs> I want everything kept together. <laughs> put on your belt. Will you put on your shoes? Will you pick up your sword? Will you pick up your sword? I'm looking at a bunch of winners this morning. I'm looking at people going to win. They already won this battle. I want you to march to the front with your sword this morning, would you? Would you come up to the front this morning with me? Would you come up with me this morning? <laughs>